start it. We engage the starter, and you're going to see light off at about 12 percent. So basically what we have is the power situational indicator. And you can see the solid green needle is the number one engine. And the green box is, is showing you what limit you would hit first with this power situational indicator. As long as we keep everything in the green, we're in max continuous power, so it makes it very simple. Now we turn the generator on. We get amperage and voltage information. Now we're cleared to start number two engine. So all we do again, just push the button in over to the start, and you'll see there's comes light off. There the engine has lit off. And you'll see the, uh, the uh, hollow needle coming up, and it will mate up with the uh, solid needle, which is the number one engine. And when we do an autopilot system check, we can see actually what it's doing. So if I engage autopilot number two, you'll actually see where it does the pitch roll and yaw. You'll see the, the flight controls move. And then it says, okay, self-check is good. And then our autopilot systems are on along with our uh, our SCAS system, which is the uh, stability uh, augmentation system. Mm -hmm. We also have a force trim. So um, right now the way it sets is the force trim will hold the controls where they're at to release and we push this button in and we can move the, the controls around or we can just release it here and then okay. you have full control of the aircraft. Sure, yeah. So, And then we have what we call the attitude mode and I'll show you that in a little bit. But it'll basically hold the aircraft in the attitude that you've set it up. Also you have your weight and balance information so it gives you an empty weight of the aircraft. Then it tells you, okay, you have right now 982 pounds of fuel on board and then you can put different weights in different stations for crew, passengers. So for instance, I'll put uh, uh, 395 here, which is me and you. And then we can put in baggage, how much baggage we have. And then it'll, it will say, okay, with those weights and the weight of the fuel, you are now sitting at 6601 pounds. So I, I can put on another 400 pounds. And here's your longitudinal center of gravity, mm -hmm. which is the white line. And then the blue line is basically where you're going to be at during your fuel burn. So I know through the whole regime of flight that I'm going to be just a little forward nose on my center of gravity, but well within the red lines, which is my longitudinal limit. Yeah. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of for the pilots, which is, for us, what we want. Also, you see where your fuel is in each of your tanks. If you have a problem with your fuel system, for instance, maybe I open the transfer valve, you will actually see where it opens a transfer valve and now the boost pump is no longer working and it's transferring fuel. So if I go back to the normal position, the boost pump is working, the transfer valve gate is closed, and now it's going to put the fuel back into the mid tank where it's supposed to be. And you notice there's no circuit breakers? Everything we have is right here. Everything the pilot needs to deal with is right here. Once again, going from 40 circuit breakers down to how many switches are there? 12, 13. It really makes life easy for us. We don't tell our bosses that because we want them to think that we're working hard up here, but it's actually very simple. Log data. Again, for the pilot, this is a really nice feature because not only does it give the pilot and operators the exact time of air time versus operating time. Operating time is basically as long as the engines are running, and that could be sitting here on the ground. Airtime is when we're at 100% and we pick the aircraft up off the ground. We have what we call a walk switch, is weight on gear switch. It will actually start the airtime, which is what you base maintenance off of. So if you didn't have that, right now we're saving 30 plus hours of maintenance because uh, everything is based off of airtime, which is saving us money. Mm -hmm. And then it has total takeoff and landings. And then for the pilot, this shows flight logs. Again, for the pilot, don't tell the bosses, but it makes your workload a lot easier. So again, here you can see traffic. Right now we got an aircraft 500 feet above us. Um, actually, there's two now. One's 500 feet above us, another's 200 feet above us, and it's probably that Agusa that just came down, um, or another aircraft on the field here. But for the TCAS, it's pretty nice. You can zoom this out to 240 miles all the way to half a mile. As we come up, I'm basically watching the power situational indicator. As long as I keep that uh, one needle in the green, I know I'm within my max continuous power, and it makes it very nice. So I only have to really watch one gauge versus six. Good. Uh, 
Display 720 is going to be holding short at Kilo for Fado 24.